you and I have to do a better job of keeping tabs on our local governments. All of us know the names of the prime ministers of Israel. We can tell you about the intricate relationships of monetary policy going on in the old Soviet bloc. And yet far too few of us know who our city council members and our school board members are. You and I need to make sure we are involved and is engaged in the local level as we are at the state and at the federal level. You and I need to make sure that we are actively working to promote good public policy in those areas. Your tax burden, two-thirds of your property tax burden is your school property taxes. Two-thirds is your school property taxes. We have seen public education spending increase 113% in just the last 10 years, 113% per pupil spending has gone from less than $5,000 per kid in 1998 to $10,000 per child per year in public education. Are we getting our money's worth? No. Are we getting our money's worth? No. What? No, we're not getting our money's worth. Our SAT scores have remained flat for the last 10 years. A 992 is what our kids scored in 1998, and a 992 is what they scored this year. That's crazy. We have doubled per pupil spending, and yet we haven't seen any academic increase. It's not because we have bad teachers. In fact, I would suggest to you that the fact that we are staying even is because we have a lot of really good teachers in our public schools. The problem, the problem is not our teachers. The problem is where we're spending the money. We're spending the money outside the classroom. There is today one non-teacher on the public school payroll for every teacher. That's crazy. The bureaucracy and the administration and the junk that teachers have to put up with is one of the main reasons why academic achievement is just barely hanging on. We have got to reform the spending in our public schools. We have to do that if we are going to see our taxes come down. Now, there are some things we have to be working on diligently at the state level, like this new business tax that the legislature put into effect just three years ago. They imposed this horrible new business tax so that we could see our property taxes come down. Well, that worked out well, didn't it? Who saw their property taxes go down? Anyone? No one did, because we didn't control the spending. But for our efforts, we got a big, burdensome new business tax. This year, we had an amazing opportunity in the legislature to just get rid of that thing, or at least make it less onerous on our small businesses. But here we are in the state of Texas where Republicans hold all statewide elected officials, Republicans control the Texas House, and Republicans control the Texas Senate. And yet, in this legislative session, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee was a liberal Democrat. Who puts a liberal Democrat in charge of the Ways and Means Committee? That's insane. That's exactly what we have, because while we have a Republican majority in the Texas House, we don't have a conservative majority in the Texas House. We have a whole lot of folks who will campaign as conservatives, but when they get to Austin, they legislate like liberals. We have far new too many people in Austin who will come here in Collin County and in Dallas County or in Tarrant County and in Denton County and wherever they may live and they will come to you and tell you that they believe just like us. They would walk around here as happy as bumblebees. But when they get down to Austin, they vote in ways that are indistinguishable from the Marxists and the left. You and I have to do a much better job of holding accountable some of those folks. You and I have to be grabbing them by the lapel and saying we're sick and tired of being lied to. You and I have to make sure that we are doing the hard work as citizen leaders of holding accountable those elected officials who betray our principles and our values when they vote, that they pay lip service to when they're here. Now, I, what we want to suggest to you is that you and I bear a lot of responsibility for that. Too many folks, too many times, we either ignore those races, and just as many times, we just nod and smile as they spoon out the pablum. 
You and I cannot just take that pablum any longer. You and I have to be about the diligent business of holding accountable our elected officials, finding out how they vote. Again, visit our website at EmpowerTexans.com or sign up for email list so you can know how your specific legislators and state senators are doing. For instance, during this legislative session, there is a proposal that would have almost doubled the gasoline taxes in Texas. Almost doubled the gasoline taxes in Texas. It would have funded, used that money to fund boondoggle mass transit spending for DART, an agency that just a year ago lost a billion dollars. And for their effort, they wanted to increase your taxes. This legislation was being pushed not by some Democrats, but by a Republican state senator named John Corona from down in Dallas County. It's time for us to make sure that we are talking to our friends and our family who live in those districts and say, please stop John Corona's madness. Don't let him increase my taxes. It passed out of the state senate, but thanks almost entirely to lots of citizens around the state sending in letters, making phone calls, we stopped it. But also thanks to some really good legislators here in Collin County. Y'all in Collin County are very fortunate. In fact, I, I live in Austin, which is basically a Marxist paradise. But I tend to think, I tend to think though, of Collin County as being my ideological home. Because here you have two of the finest state representatives. You have one of the finest county judges in the state. You have one of the best county commissioners in the state. Matt Shaheen, a new county commissioner, and uh, Keith Self, the county judge, have done remarkable work at the local level of bringing transparency to local county government. At the state level, you've got Ken Paxton and Jody Lobenberg, who have done remarkable work of promoting good policy and standing up to insane high taxes that are simply unnecessary and aren't accountable. We need to make sure that we are working to help those good guys. It's easy to get into the mindset of toss all the bums out. Well, there's something to be said about tossing all the bums out, but let's remember, there are some good bums. Let's toss the good bums out later. Start with the bad bums. And I'll name a couple names from right here in Collin County. Brian McCall, nice guy, but he is one of the worst members of the Texas legislature, period. Get rid of fact. This Republican from Plano, if you flipped a coin and voted based on the coin flip, you would do just as well as Brian McCall did on taxpayer issues. Brian McCall's a nice guy, but he's not doing a good job for Texas taxpayers. You and I need to make sure that we are holding accountable those elected officials. One of my ancestors was a fellow by the name of Benjamin Rush. Benjamin Rush signed the Declaration of Independence with the other uh, uh, founding fathers on August 2nd of 1776 when all their names were affixed to that document. And the, the poet in me loves the opening lines talking about, the, uh, talking about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The middle of it appeals to the activist in me. You know, talking about what a jerk the king is, talking about how he needs to go and he's a bad guy and all that wonderful stuff. But the last line is the line you and I as citizens should pay the closest attention to. The line which our founding fathers affixed to their names that day in early August of 1776, 233 years ago, when they signed that document that reads, and to this we pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. They were willing to put everything on the line going up against not just a mighty king, but the most powerful nation on the world, on the, on the face of the planet. They were willing to sacrifice everything. And yet far too many of us get, feel like we're being inconvenienced to write a letter to our elected officials or to show up to vote when it's time for a city council or a school board election.